and welcome to the 4 p.m. news on Canada English uh, with me, Regina uh, Fonchia Leke. Coming up in this newscast, uh, today marks the beginning of the baccalaureate examinations in Cameroon. More than 1,000 candidates across the national territory have sat for these examinations uh, today. Plus, single motherhood is fast becoming a trend in Cameroon, but the process of raising children alone remains very challenging. We meet some single mothers in this newscast. And out of the country, the White House Director of Communication has resigned only three months after being hired by President Donald Trump. This and more right ahead. Now, more than 1,000 candidates across the country have begun writing the baccalaureate examinations. And at the Lycee Bileng uh, de Bobongo Douala, 869 candidates are sitting in for these examinations. Uh, some cases of absences were also recorded, as Christel Catala tells us. At Government Balingua High School, Bobongo Petit Pari in Douala, an unusual campaigns on campus. In the examination halls, 869 candidates, both art and science, series are writing the subject of the day. Literature and philosophy. The chief of the sub-center has taken measures to avoid all forms of fraud and cheating. He also made sure that the exams unfold in all serenity. All is okay. Uh, all the candidates are here. We have just uh, four, four candidates who are not uh, inside the classroom. So uh, since this morning at 8 a.m., all has started. All the teachers are in classroom. All the secretary are working, actually. So all is OK. We do not have any problem here. The atmosphere is similar at Lycée de Dorhem. In this sub-center, seven out of 857 candidates are absent. All think uh, is uh, going fine because uh, a supervise, supervisor we come and prepare things with the, the other member of the administration and uh, since we, I came here yesterday we, I saw that all things are moving fine and today the candidate came and we controlled them and so on and now all things are it's, it's going big, uh, really fine and I have the occasion to work with uh, that woman. The candidate will be writing the baccalaureate exams during four days. The examination ushers them to higher education. Still in line with uh, the bag examinations, the Secretary General at the Ministry of Secondary Education, uh, Professor Ivo Leke Tambo, has visited some centers to evaluate the kickoff uh, of the baccalaureate examinations. Beatrice Ngamu accompanied the minister and brought back this report. The quiet schools, examination centers, and sub centers tells serious business is ongoing in the classrooms. That is why the Secretary General of the Ministry of Secondary Education, Professor Ivo Tamboleke, and delegation came to verify and evaluate this Tuesday morning in some of the centers following kickoff of the written and practical phase of the baccalaureate examinations this May 30th, 2017. The stops at five examination centers, Government Balingua High School Ngoso, Government Balingua High School Member Man, Lycée Technique Ekono, the Jean Alege Messi Sub Center, and the Cetic Ngoikele. Appreciation of the Secretary General, the Minister of Secondary Education, satisfactory. We are very satisfied with what we have seen. The collaborators, the students, there's a lot of assiduity, there's a lot of seriousness, and uh, we are satisfied. Our impressions are very good. At the end of the inspection tour of this examination accommodation centers, Professor Ivo Tambuleke has this prescription in the name of the minister. Is that they should continue to work like this, and uh, not only here, but also to encourage and send the message of the minister to all the other regions that they should continue to work as we have found here, and uh, remain vigilant so that the end of the, the exams can uh, end up very well as we are, as they have taken off. Some close to 285,000 candidates are sitting this 2017 baccalaureate general examination in centers across the national territory. 
still in education, pedagogic inspectors and science teachers are meeting in Yaoundé to revisit uh, the GLOBE program in uh, Cameroon. The opening ceremony took place yesterday under the chairmanship of the Minister of uh, Secondary Education, Jean Ngale BBA. Once more, Beatrice Ngamu. Han on primary and secondary school based science and education program went operational on World Earth Day 1995. Investigating the atmosphere, investigating the hydrosphere, that's water bodies, investigating the pedosphere, the soil, and then investigating the biosphere, so the land cover, living things. A celebration of the World Earth Day and the global program to secondary education, secondary education minister explains. It should be recorded that many years. And thanks to the implementation of a global program in Cameroon, issues of the environment and the health are now measures concerns. The double event, Jean Enes Masina Ngale Bibé, opened this May 29 in Yaoundé, is to build capacities of pedagogic inspectors and teachers on the program in Cameroon. We expose the teacher, we expose the inspector so that they can easily work with the students. Else, the knowledge that you want the students to know will be too big. And so, pass it on to the children. The children are involved in the practice of using science materials, not that they stand and see you doing. They do it themselves. An example is the school-based weather station designed for schools and very effective. 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. on a daily basis, the students come out to carry out basic observations of the weather, <coughs> the temperature, the amount of rainfall, cloud cover. But at the same time, globe can go to the field. Because carrying out investigations on hydrology it means water bodies, you cannot do it within the school compound. Enlightening students on environmental and earth science easy. We have some instruments. We go out and examine the climate change, the weather using the different instruments, to know our different temperatures. And so, improve knowledge and understanding of earth, the environment, our livelihood. To celebrate this day. We stay in the center of our region, but this time we talk elections where the, uh, the Nyong and Kele division has registered about 1,000 uh, new voters ahead of the 2018 presidential and legislative uh, elections. Uh, the numbers, according to authorities, is not that satisfactory, a reason why they have gone down on a mission to the region. We have details with Beatrice Ngamu. Three months to the end of registration on the electoral list, Statistics less satisfactory in the Nyong and Kele division of the central region. Difficulties hindering work on the field, numerous. Excessive heavy rains, enclaved zones, lack of electricity, the lack of national identity card, and the lack of interest by the population. The 10 subdivisions of Nyong and Kele, Biyuha, Bonjok, Mbot Makak, Dibang Ezeka, Makak Matom, Mesondo, Ngong Mapubi, and Gibasal gives a total of 1,042 newly registered and 496 electoral cards distributed as of the 26th of May 2017. The members of the electoral board of Elekam for the central region, May 29, exchanged with the actors of the electoral process in the Nyong and Kele division. This to improve their working methods and conditions and correct issues before the 30th of August. We feel to encourage our collaborators because what they are doing on the field is a bit difficult due to the distances, the lack of means of communication and so on. But they don't have to give up. They have to maintain their efforts and to try to go the farthest they can go so that all the community can be implicated in uh, this domain of elections. After the Nyong and Fumo, Nyong and So, and Nyong and Kele, the electoral members from the central region will tour all the 10 divisions of the region. This for midterm evaluation of revision on electoral list and better preparation for the upcoming 2018 elections. 
Now, single motherhood is fast becoming a trend in uh, Cameroon. However, raising children alone could be a very daunting uh, task. Uh, single mothers say they are going through tough times to raise their children. Most of them have been forced to engage in petite businesses in order to live up to the, to the task, as Ndi Morin tells us. It is with joy and excitement that 18-year-old Julie has been taking care of her son since birth. As a single mother, she says the task is difficult, but she's obliged to work as a housemaid to fend for the child's needs. Each day that passes gets her closer to her child. Her dream to see him become a successful man. A baby is a gift from God. A mother who does not show love and care to the child should not consider herself a mother because she has no feeling. He is my reason for being alive and my future. Elsewhere, Chantal is 24. She lives with her two children and single-handedly brings them up despite daily challenges. She has no job but has to provide for the kids. These young mothers, in their own small way, are celebrating Mother's Day. They say it's time to pay tribute to mothers around the world and urge others to honor their mothers. Most people would agree that a mother plays a pivotal role in shaping the lives of her children. But sometimes mothers cater for children who cannot uh, stand on their own. We have a case of Mama Regine who has lost hope in life and sees no reason for celebrating a Mother's Day. Her elder son is stuck in a wheelchair. Ndi Maureen has more. For over three years now, this mother, fondly called by friends, Regine Zassi, has lost hope in life and the joy that characterizes Mother's Day. She lives in pain as she sees her eldest son, Elman, 37 years old, gradually getting into his grave. Elman is now stuck in this wheelchair. He cannot talk nor help himself. We are in Banja, in Upper Cam, in the West Region of Cameroon. I am celebrating Mother's Day with regret. My son who has reached that age of providing for my basic needs and give me medications when I'm sick is stuck in his wheelchair. I don't know what happened to him. He used to be very strong. He no longer talks. He can't walk. She sees a mystical hand in the sun's sickness. The family has been unable to go over medical analysis to know the exact cause of his ailment. The mother sees she lacks the money and is now counting on the other children for help. We are disturbed by our brother's sickness. We contribute when we can. Like Mama Regine, so many other mothers are getting through tough times in rural areas. In locations like these, they dance and sing to forget their troubles. Now we take you to the north where uh, the Lagdo electricity dam is in a dilapidating uh, state and has affected the production of electricity in this area. In a bid to revive the production potential of this dam, the Minister of Water and Energy Resources is on a walking visit to the area. Lorian Gamini. The Minister of Water and Energy Resources, Basil Atanganakuna, is on a walking visit in the Grand North of Cameroon. The main reason of his visit is to seek ways to revive electricity supply in the region, which for some time now have been fluctuating because of the old and dilapidating state of the Lac du Dam. The director of NAO reminded it before. That is why I appreciate his presence here this day. He assured us that probably by the end of July, some contracts will be signed so as to construct solar system distributions. These centers will be built in Gaoundere, Gide, and Marwa, and it will be of very high capacity. Mais également à Marwa, trois centrales solaires d'une capacité de plus de 25 mégawatts. Since the construction of the Lac Dodam in 1983, it has always been the principal source of electricity distribution in the interconnected network of the Grand North. 
à plus long terme. Ça aussi, c'est important de, de le savoir. In the long run, we intend constructing another dam that will generate more electricity production for the population interconnected. Dans la région de la Damawa, c'est un barrage qui va générer 75 mégawatts. The Cameroonian government is looking forward to putting in place some solutions to solve the problem of electricity shortage, both in the cities and villages of Adamawa, north and far north regions of Cameroon. On our feature page, we take you to the Upper Sanaga Division uh, Center region, precisely in a village called Jombe. And Jombe is situated some 135 kilometers from Nanga Eboko. And here, hunger is rife, and making ends meet is not easy. Annette Efeti Esome. Villages in Upper Sanaga Division consider the rainy season as a period of hunger. In one of the villages known as Jombe, Artisanal fishing and the cultivation of maize and tubers are their day-to-day -day activity. These villagers have to trek for two hours under difficult conditions to go fishing. At nightfall, the sleep in the open are the banks of River Tia, and in the early hours, the long and tedious day starts for the hungry people. There is no food back in the village. We have come fishing so as to have food. Since it's the period of fishing, we do fish in the rivers our forefathers left behind. Rising waters on this day makes fishing difficult. After a long and difficult day, all hope is gone and the villagers give up. One of the dams has collapsed. The main dam has spoiled everything. But if all goes well, in some two hours or more, we can continue with fishing. Things are rough. We have to start all over. At the end of the day, the women some, even pregnant, accompanied by their husbands, go home empty-handed. Not even the hired water pump help them in the difficult situation. We talk uh, Ramadan and fasting is one of the five pillars of is Islam observed uh, during the Ramadan uh, period. The ritual practice has, however, not been a hindrance uh, to activities of some Muslim faithfuls, especially the Malian nationals who have lived in Douala for over two decades. Gladys Ambo has more. Bubaka is a Malian national who has lived in the Komondo neighborhood in Douala, Cameroon for several years. He is a dry cleaner and a Muslim faithful. Bubaka begins his day at 6.30 a.m. and has remained steadfast to his faith despite challenges he faces daily in the exercise of his duties. There is just nothing that can stop him, not even fasting, which is one of the pillars of Islam, which is a practice observed during the period of Ramadan. According to Bubakar, fasting is a ritual and not a hindrance to work. Few meters away from Bubakar, there is another dry cleaner, a Muslim faithful who has lived in that same neighborhood for 25 years. Tambura, as he is known by area residents, also confesses that fasting has no negative effect on his business. On the contrary, he receives more customers and works four hours a day, modifying his working schedule because of the Ramadan ritual practices is far-fetched, although he faces some difficulties. We face difficulties, but we are dealing with them. I started this job since 1987 in Senegal. I came here in 2005 and have continued with the same activities. Fasting is not a hindrance. When I am through by 2 p.m., I go for Quran studies and at 4 p.m. I resume work. Bubaka and Tambura are very ready to respect fasting without it being a hindrance to their business activities.
and stay in line with uh, the Ramadan Muslim faithfuls in Fumban in the known division have been instructed to get rid of bad behavior during this holy period of Ramadan. Uh, the fasting period that began a few days ago will run for one month. Christelle Catala reports. Muslim faithfuls in Fumban in the Noon Division, West region of Cameroon, have begun fasting for the month of Ramadan. In different mosques, moments of meditation are intensified, like prayers, preaching, samodhi from the Quran. Fasting is prescribed to them by Allah in verse 183 of the Holy Book. This be Muslim faithfuls will have to abstain from drinking, eating, and having sexual intercourse during the holy month. As you all know, the month of Ramadan is a blessed month where saints are forgiven. It's a month where every Muslim should think of doing something good. Ramadan constitutes the fourth pillar of Islam. Those who abstain from the fasting are the sick, pregnant women, and nursing mothers. During the period, Muslims are equally called upon as peer of the Quran to manifest acts of generosity. We have started the Ramadan fast uh, in a very calm atmosphere. First of all, the weather is wonderful and we did not go through any confusion as it is usually the case here in Cameroon. Fuman is started the same day with any other Cameroonian and uh, we have started the same day with any of the majority of African countries. Ramadan corresponds to the ninth month of the Muslim year according to the lunar calendar. It is during this month that the Quran was given as guide to Muslim for good conduct. And we talk sports and the indomitable lions of Cameroon have begun preparing ahead of the Confederations uh, Cup to run from June uh, the 13th to July the 2nd. Head coach Hugo Bros uh, yesterday granted a press briefing to explain his choice of players selected. Tabby Clarkson was part of that press briefing. A coach of the National Football Squad granted a press conference this morning at Fekar Foods headquarters in Yaoundé. Coach Hugo Boss came back to the list of 23 players that he has called to camp ahead for the friendly match against Morocco on June 10th in Yaoundé and the Confederations Cup that Cameroon will play in Russia as from the 13th of June. According to Hugo Boss, some players have not been called up because of injury, but the non-selection of Clinton J has to do with performance. I explained it already why uh, Clinton is not there, and that's the only reason. It's not a reason of discipline, it's not a reason because he had some trouble with uh, Roger Mila or whatever. Clinton is not there because, like, as I said, he's a good player with much qualities. And uh, we saw it on the preparation games before the camp against uh, RDC and uh, Zimbabwe. He was really very good. And Ten days later, first game Burkina Faso, second game against uh, Guinea Bissau, it was only 50%. And it was not the first time, because when I was my first press conference in Gabon, he was with me and they asked him the same question. For now, eight of the 23 players are in camp, as the Lions will this Thursday play a friendly against first division side Union Sportive of Douala. On June 2nd, the team will arrive at Equatorial Guinea, where they will spend some days and will be back home to play a friendly against Morocco on June 10th at the Yaoundé Home Sports Stadium. On the possibility of a local base player to be selected, Hugo Bros has this to say. It's no problem. We are start working now in Malabo. I think we will be there with 18 players, maybe 20 players. So there are only three players who are coming the last two days there. So the preparation will be very good. No problem about that. But we have to look a little bit and it's not our fault. We can't ask players to come now. At the Confederations Cup, Cameroon will play in Group B alongside Chile, Australia and Germany. And to the coach, 
the main objective of Cameroon is to qualify for the second round of the competition. And we take you now out of the country to the United States where the director of communications has resigned only three months after being hired by President Donald Trump. Mike Dobke, an experienced Republican strategist, was hired in March to revamp the White House media strategy. As part of the shakeup, the White House press secretary, Sean Spicer, will reportedly hold on his position, but there will be fewer media briefings. Even though Dobke leaves on good terms, many have been quick to note his resignation has much to do with uh, Donald Trump's uh, several control uh, verses. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was what we had for you today on the 4 p.m. news on Canal de English. But of course, do stick around for more interesting programs on your favorite TV. Have a nice day. Goodbye.